We'd now like to present uh, to you a special address by Mr. Suresh Sagavanam, the Vice President and Managing Director for UL South Asia. In his capacity, he's responsible for driving UL's growth in India, building on the solid foundation and momentum achievement by In India for uh, India Strategy. Let us put our hands together for an alumni of IIT Delhi and somebody who holds an MBA in Strategy, Finance and International Business from University of Chicago. Let's put our hands together. He has a very tough job to do. He is in the slot right before lunch, so let's all bear with him and let's put our hands together and welcome him on stage. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, and uh, very good to speak here. And uh, like she said, tough job indeed. Uh, but maybe I'll just make an assertion that you probably didn't come here just for lunch. So. Allow me about 10 minutes to, uh, to just talk about uh, new science uh, that can help smart cities. Uh, UL is a 120 year old company uh, based out of Chicago and we've been furthering the advancement of safety through science. Um, and the topic that we chose was the new science and how new science could actually help uh, smart cities as, as India goes, goes further. Um, we did a, uh, we do an annual survey. I'll, I'll just set the context for even def definition of new science. We did we do an annual survey every year, which which uh, we call the product mindset. And what we found out in that survey last year, uh, when we did the survey across Brazil, China, India, uh, U.S. and Germany, so five countries, we did the survey of consumers on how they buy products. And I'll come to how this relates to smart cities in a second. Consumers in Brazil, India, and China buy products based on uh, very basic requirements. What is the quality of the product? What is the price of the product? Uh, does the product actually do what it says? Whereas when you look at the same survey for US and Germany, there were trends like all that stuff which is sort of fundamental requirements of a product were already given. And the consumers have already moved on to the next level where they say, well, I actually want to know where this product was actually made. Was this made in a sweatshop in some third world country, as they would call it? Yeah. What is the environmental impact of this product that I'm going to use? If I'm using an iPhone, when it eventually gets destroyed after three or four years of lifespan, what is the environmental impact of it? What kind of chemicals is it going to release in the atmosphere and so on? So clearly the consumers have gone on to a very different uh, uh, frame. And interestingly enough, I think the Indian consumer is also catching up pretty quickly. You relate that to what all of us as businesses are going through. The evolution of business has been very complex by now. There are complex supply chains. There are all, all these um, interoperable devices that we work with and so on. Inherent to all of this advancement of technology and consumer requirement to us is actually risk. Yeah, so every time we are doing an online transaction, we are subjecting ourselves to risk. We actually look at all of these potential risks and how to address those risks, and that is what we call the new science. Because the basic science of physics and chemistry, etc., has to evolve to adapt to what the industry, what the consumers are actually looking for. And that new science, when we apply to actually the whole discussions around smart cities, so I'll present a few concepts along this, uh, which, which I'd uh, like all of you to take, uh, take notice of and encourage that discussion going forward. Smart cities, we, we look at three different elements of smart cities. One is a smart city should be a safe city. Second, it should be a green city. And third, it should be a connected city. Yeah? So let me just sort of double click on each one of those for a, uh, for a few minutes. On safe cities, well, we should be using safe products in safe cities, right? Uh, blood pressure monitor, uh, all kind of medical devices should be safe inherently to use. We should have in a safe city, safe buildings. When I look at, I was just sitting here and just looking at the, uh, the construction of this hall. This is a very prestigious hotel in New Delhi. Yeah? When you look around, you'll actually see that there are fire alarms installed. But God forbid if, if there's a fire here, I actually don't see a sprinkler system here. Yeah? 
in smart city, in a safe city, we actually want people to be safe, buildings to be safe. We want safe transactions. Yeah? All of us use internet, all of us have smartphones. Probably all of you also know that internet is probably the most unsecure place ever. Anything could be tracked. Yeah? How do we make the transaction secure? For example, I could use my smartphone and actually record program at home yeah? on television. I can do that. I'm sure all of you can do that as well. I can also control the temperature of air conditioning at my home using my smartphone. The fact is, if I can do it, someone else can hack into the same account and he or she can do that as well. So we are all subjecting ourselves to all these risks with all these smart technologies which are coming out. So how do we put a safety net around all of this and say, well, if I'm going to live in a smart city, I want to feel secure in a smart city. I want to feel safe in a smart city. Yeah? So that's the first concept. The second is on green cities. I think one of the speakers or, or, or the panelists earlier talked about energy efficiency and demand side management and how all that can be used, which is, which is all very, very re relevant. Because in a smart city, you want it to be a green city. And um, all of these, whether it's the HVAC, the lighting that is used, all of that stuff, ha the, the building has to be a green building that we, the, that we live and breathe in. Energy security. A lot of states within the U.S., uh, I'm aware, actually have uh, a requirement for 10%, um, 20%, 5% reserve margin on top of the peak capacity that is ever required in that particular city or in that particular state. So if you estimate that in the next summer, the peak energy demand would be, I'll make it up, 5 gigawatt for the city, you must have at least 20% more, which is 6 gigawatt of generation capacity. Energy security and providing 24-7 power is absolutely critical. We have to think about what will it take to actually get to those levels. Um, electric vehicles. Yeah? Green uh, cities should have electrical vehicles. By that, inherently, there are these large batteries, there are these charging stations that we need, need to install. Inherently, there are risks in all of that. Yeah? A battery is is a bunch of chemicals thrown into a relatively small device which is producing electricity inherently there are risks yeah uh, what are the kind of safety measures we could put in not just in into the battery but also into the charging station and how do we make all of this secure i'll give you one other story about indoor air quality because for green city we i think um, it was um, honorable minister uh, mr naidu who talked about he doesn't like to be in, in a closed environment. And guess what, I have a story of, of uh, one of our colleagues in China who um, moved into a new office, brand new office with new couches, new paint in the wall, everything fancy. And then, unfortunately, he had to travel out of that, that uh, uh, office for, for two months. When he came back, he realized that the plant in his office had actually died. Yeah, this is despite his assistant actually watering the plant every day. The plant died because of the volatile organic compounds that existed in that room. And those compounds actually came out of the sofa, the leather that was on the sofa, the paint that was on the wall, the acrylic which was used to actually do up the, the, the room. When you're looking at a safe city, you want a green city, you want a smart city, you want to take into consideration all of these and where the world is going and how we can adapt all of those, what kinds of standards are required for indoor air quality in India. Yeah, Very essential ingredient. Talk about my, my, my last theme which is about smart city being a connected city. In connected city, fundamental is interoperability. Yeah? Imagine a hospital in a smart city where there are all these fancy devices in operating table and, 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 and uh, medical practitioners are actually using these devices. Imagine these devices being at some point being unable to talk to each other and transmission of data or there is loss of information. Virus, hackers, anything can happen and that would result in a wrong diagnosis potentially leading to death. Now you do not want these basic things happening in a smart city. You just don't, right? Smart grids. Um, I used to live in Germany until last summer, and I have a live example from what happened in Germany last summer. There was a lot of electricity generated 
right, from wind and solar because it was a high wind season, a lot of sun came suddenly in Germany last summer and guess what happened? The grid started to overheat and when the grid starts to overheat, you have to then control the coal power station and the nuclear power station down. Now the fact is you cannot control these down, you cannot switch them off like that and solar and wind are essentially free power once they are installed so you don't want to switch them off. Net result, a lot of electricity getting pumped into a grid which is unable to handle it. Do you want that in a smart city? Do you know what the result of that would be? So what we actually want is each one of these generation devices to be smart in of themselves. Right? We talk about internet of things. These particular devices, power generation devices, have to talk to each other. They have to communicate each other through the grid. Yeah? How quickly and how well can we actually get to the, those levels? I could go on examples with, with uh, smart cards in transportation systems, right? which are used, the same smart card could be used for your metro or underground or, or any of these um, and the same card is used to buy you to, uh, basic groceries in a grocery store. Imagine uh, losing that smart card or somebody actually hacking into the smart card. So every time you add money onto the smart card, someone else, uh, else get, gets, gets that money as well. Before you even realize, it's already multiplied over millions of population and people are actually making money out of this. Yeah? So you actually are looking at, again, I'll just summarize by saying, for a smart city, you have to look at safety, you have to look at green and you have to, be, to look at the connectedness of a smart city. And all of these tied together, one other essential ingredient um, that I'm, a, I'm hearing at least on, uh, from several quarters over, ever since the whole smart city became a buzzword. Each state, rightly so, is, is empowered to select what smart cities should be. And each state and each, um, actually even country, Japan, China, US, Germany, France, lots of countries are saying, well, let's form consortiums and bid for these smart cities where our companies will actually provide uh, solutions here. What you do not want as India is a smart city in one state is different from a smart city in another state in terms of the standards of safety that I talked about, in terms of standards of security. Because guess what? The same smart card that is used in one smart city will be used or you want it to be used in a different smart city as well because you want people to be mobile. Yeah? So there has to be a basic set of standards that we have to talk about across all of these cities. So what am I talking about? What is the ask from all of this? First of all, is the recogni recognition that inherently smart technologies, smart cities means more risks. And there are new signs available globally that we've been working on which can be applied to, to create solutions and make smart cities a safe city. Second, for a lot of us who are part of the industry, for all of us to realize that the new signs should be and must be taken on board now when the smart cities are being planned so that when we go on and move towards the implementation stage all this is already baked in. And third actually for the government of India as well not just at the center but also in the states to actually ensure that there are minimum standards that are enforced to a certain extent because we all know that unless something is made mandatory it's well usually not followed if I may say that. So therefore for the government in center and state to actually ensure a certain minimum standard across being a green city, across being a safe city, across being a connected city. So those are the asks. And when we actually put this together, this will take a few years and I think we just have to be patient. It's not going to be like the smart cities are going to spring up left, right, center starting tomorrow. So we just have to be uh, smart about it. We have to make sure that we, we, uh, we make India a safer place and internationally acceptable as well in leading that infrastructure. Those are my thoughts. Thank you very much. Thank you so very much, uh, Suresh, uh, for giving us an uh, international outlook there. And once again, may I please request uh, Sunita to present uh, Suresh with a token of appreciation on uh, behalf of uh, our entire team. Let us put our hands together.
for our special speaker there. Requesting both of you to join us for a photo opportunity.